Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily code problem. So today is March 15th, and we got yet again another graph algorithm. So let's take a peek, and it's called count unreachable pairs of nodes in an undirected graph. And so to, basically you wanna do what the title's asking, where you're given a graph, and you wanna see how many pairs of nodes, so it's kinda of two nodes, sets of two, um, pairs of nodes, that are not reachable in that graph, right? And so the number that are unreachable. And so let's say we're given these two nodes. We wanna see, are these two nodes reachable? And they are in fact. So you wouldn't increment the count here. You would just leave it at zero. And then you wanna see, okay, is this pair, are they reachable? And yes, they are because we can see that they're able to be connected through this edge. And then this pair, are these reachable? Yes, they are, because they have this edge. And yeah, I think we just covered kind of all three cases there. And so in that case, we wouldn't actually return zero because every pair of nodes is actually connected. They're all reachable um, through some edge in the graph. But if we're looking at this one, there's actually 14 different pairs that aren't actually reachable. And so that's why we return 14 here is let's look at some cases. Okay, is this node able to reach this node? Yes, it is, because they can jump through this edge and then go through this edge here. But what if we wanna go four and the other node in this pair we chose was one? Well, these aren't actually reachable because there's no edge that connects them. And so now we will increment our solution to one. And then let's say, okay, well, what about six and three? Well, that's not reachable, so now we're at two. And then one and three, well, that's not reachable, and that's three. Well, six and four, that's now, those aren't reachable, so now we're at four unreachable pairs, and et cetera. And you'd actually end up with, if you counted them all, four different, 14 different pairs of nodes that aren't actually reachable in this graph, okay? And so now we're practically like, where do you go from here? How would you actually solve this type of problem? Um, typically, whenever you see a question, especially a graph question, where you think, okay, how many things are reachable? Or what nodes in this graph are unreachable? And what you should actually kind of phrase it is more like, okay, what's connected or not in this graph? Like, what groups of components or nodes or vertexes are able to kind of reach each other and connect with each other within each subgraph and what's not connected what are kind of split into kind of separate islands here right and so whenever you think of this wording and this concept you should directly associate it with something called union find and so this is an algorithm but you also have to implement like a class for it and it's used so that you can see what nodes are connected or not, what's reachable from each node. You can also use depth first search because you can just drill down on that node and see in its kind of um, all of its children nodes and their children, you know, what is connected if you do a depth first search on say the root node, like what is reachable by that node. And then say you go down to the leaves. Okay, what's reachable from the leaves? Well, nothing because it's a leaf. Um, and so, well, if it's a, like a tree, I guess. But um, yeah, so you can use it using depth first search, sometimes breadth first search. But typically, whenever you think of um, what is reachable from a particular node and what's not, you should think of union find because it's literally designed for solving these types of problems. But yeah, so let's take a peek. Um, I'll go ahead and just implement the class. I'm gonna let you go ahead and learn more of the theory on your own if you don't know union find. Um, but this is a great way so you can see a templated way of implementing union find and how to apply it on a problem. Okay, so typically we just create three different methods here. The first one will be the constructor and then we'll also define something called the find uh, method, and then finally, the union. Oh, I can't type today. And so here, what we're gonna do is we'll pass in the number of nodes that we're dealing with, and so we're gonna set two arrays here. One's going to be the parent, 
And what it's going to be is kind of a direct access array um, where it's going to be the size of the number of nodes we're dealing with. And it's supposed to represent, okay, what is the root node of this particular node? Okay, so given this node here, what's its root? And so at the beginning, each the root associated with that node is going to be itself. And so that's why it's going to be, okay, the zero index is going to have a value of zero, which will represent, okay, its parent is itself. The index one will also have the value of one inside that cell because its parent will be itself, okay? So the value will correspond to the index originally because in the node zero, index zero, will have a value of zero representing that, okay, its parent is itself. Okay, I hope that kind of made sense there. Um, and then we're gonna have something called the rank. And this is the main way of how we're gonna solve this is we're gonna give each one a rank. And typically this is used as a performance optimization when having to deal with, okay, which one, how are we gonna group these together? And usually when you're adding and connecting all these nodes into these bubbles, you wanna keep track of, okay, how many bubbles, how many nodes are in this kind of subgraph. And that's typically what the rank kind of symbolizes, is the number of nodes that are in that kind of connection pool. And so initially we're gonna set it to one because each node is gonna just be a single bubble. And so that will be a, um, a one here, and we'll just multiply it by the number of nodes that we're dealing with. Okay, and so when we do find, we wanna find what is the parent or kind of the root of this particular node. And so that will be a, okay, if the parent of x is not itself, then we can break out of this cycle and just return the parent of x. So this is saying, okay, if the parent is itself or is not itself, that means that we haven't reached the root node because the root node's parent will always be itself. And so if you haven't found the root yet, you're going to have to kind of recursively go up that chain and try to find that parent. And so if we haven't hit the case where we found a root node, because this case when this happens will match that root node, you'll want to kind of keep iterating up the chain until you hit that root node. And so you say, okay, then the parent of X will be equal to the recursive call to this function, its parent. And so you pass in kind of self.parent instead of X here. And this is another performance optimization. It allows you to get kind of a log n because you're kind of splitting in half the number of recursive calls you will have to be making up the chain. Okay, and that's just another kind of union fine performance optimization. Um, it's very popular. You probably learn it in like first year of computer science. Um, and then let's think. So then for union, what we want to do is we'll pass in the two values that we want to union together. Oh, I almost forgot to put self here. And so we just want to look up their their root nodes, so x root and y root. And that will be equal to finding call to that particular node. And then from there, we wanna say, okay, if x root is equal to y root, then we're just gonna return because if they both have the same root, then they're, that means they're in that kind of graph or that pool together. And so naturally they've already been kind of union together. And so we can just return. Otherwise, that means they don't share the same root and we want to union them together. And so that will be, um, otherwise, if they're not, then we'll compare their ranks because we always want to um, make the new root the one with the larger rank. And that's another kind of performance optimization um, and so let's go ahead and do that. So we compare the ranks and we want to group together 
those two pools and we want to say okay then the parent of y will be equal to x root because if x root has a larger rank then all the bubbles within this subgraph will be a child of x root and then we want to increment that rank of x root by adding up all the values in the rank of y root. Great, and so we basically want to do the exact same thing, but the inverse here. And say, okay, if y root has a larger rank, then all the values in the x root pool will go to and be a child of the y root pool. Okay, and so now what we need to do is kind of adjust this so that it works with this graph algorithm. And so we need to say, okay, um, how do we check whether these pairs of nodes are reachable, but then also we have to care about the number of combinations, right? And so we can say, okay, how many, say we connected all these four, we need to know how many combinations because there's much more than just four here. Like there's, that's one, that's two, um, that's three, but then, wait, one, two, three, and then if I do this, and then there's this, and then there's, um, I can't think right now, this, and then there's this. So I think there's seven in just this pool. So there's more than just kind of three here, or four sets of pairs, right? And so you need to think of, okay, how many combinations is there actually? And so what you need to do is when you join these bubbles, we'll need to say, okay, the number of combinations, I'll say num combinations is equal to the rank of x root times the rank of y root. Okay, and so this is because what if we have one node and another node? Then when you rank these, oh, then you would have now a number of pairs of one because one times one is one. But say you have two nodes in here, so now there's two and these are kind of connected together and you group it with this node and so this one would have a rank of two and this group of nodes would have a rank of one and so you'd multiply them and now you would have two. And that's true because you do have two pairs. This pair and this pair are kind of being added together, okay? And so you, you already kind of accounted for this pair earlier, which is represented by one. And so when you group together this extra node here, then you now actually have two extra new pairs, okay? And so as you're adding them together, you need to be incrementally including and multiplying kind of how many extra combinations are we including here? Well, it's the result of this multiplication is the number of combinations we're making, okay? And so you actually will just add it here. And so we need something to keep track of this number of combinations. Initially it's zero and you want to increment them each time. Great, and so now that we know, okay, how many combinations are kind of connected here, we know the number of pairs that are reachable, but now we have to deal with, okay, how many are unreachable from each other? And so to get that, um, we'll just go ahead and instantiate our class. So we'll say u is equal to our union class and we'll pass in the number of nodes. And then typically you just iterate through all of our edges and we just call our union find. And so we just say, okay, we want to union i and j together and that will then call kind of the find here to get their parents. And so from there, we wanna say, okay, 
um, then after we've union together, we will then have the number of combinations associated with it. And so we can't just return the number of combinations that we have. We have to return, okay, how many are not there? And so we just pass in our math.com from n and two. And I'm just seeing, and I want to quickly just double check this all. And I'll explain that in a second. Yeah, so it works. Um, is so basically, now that we know, okay, this is the number of kind of pairs that are reachable from each other. That's what we were doing when we were, ever, we were multiplying those two groups. We would get, okay, now this is how many new combinations that we're making. And so after our unioning of those pairs are done together, we know how many no pairs are reachable. And so get the number that aren't reachable, we just subtract it by the number of combinations we can make from that given number. And so then we know, okay, this is actually how many are unreachable from each other. Okay, and so I believe I explained this earlier, but math.combination um, n comma two, oh, I can't type, is the exact same as doing n times n minus one. Um, put a bracket there, divided by two, okay? And so these are kind of mathematically equivalent of this will actually give you the number of combinations you can make from like n nodes, okay? So that, and you say two because we're dealing with a pair. If you want to know like groups of three, then you just pass in three in that case. Okay, so yeah, I hope that helped. Um, it's a great question to practice union find on. I recommend you looking up what union find is. This is a great template for working with it. And we just had to simply adjust it and kind of tune it so that it works with our algorithm. But really only took like four lines of code here plus this one here and just adding a um, instance variable or attribute associated with our class. So pretty easy. It's just mostly all this um, boilerplate code you have to write. But yeah, I hope it helped and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Have a great day.